Good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about the radiographic equipment and how to operate it accordingly and safely. We're going to first talk about <clears throat> that this is the x-ray tube. The x-ray tube is very essential for radiographers. The position that the x-ray tube is located in at the moment is called PARC. It is placed on a pillow so that it does not come in contact with the table. Now you can move the tube by using the appropriate buttons depressed on each side. Let's first talk about the tube itself. The positive side of the x-ray tube is the anode. The negative side of the x-ray tube is the cathode. This is very important in imaging anatomy. Now in order to move the x-ray tube, <clears throat> if you press the vertical button, the tube will go up and down. If you press the longitudinal button, the tube will go along the table. The transverse button will enable the tube to go back and forth across the table. The roll button will enable the tube to move what we would consider towards the head, a cephalic angulation, or towards the feet, a caudal angulation. So we can roll the tube towards the feet and towards the head. This device will enable us to be accurate on the degree of rotation that we need. So if we need to have a 15 degree rotation towards the feet, we would depress the button for roll and move 15 degrees toward the feet of the patient. It's very important when we are getting ready to make an exposure that we do something that is critical in order for us to make an accurate exposure. What we're going to do is we're going to put the tube located to the center of the table. Now this is a term that we like to term as detent. If you press the transverse button and go back and forth across the table, you can see that it just goes back and forth. If you press the LT auto stop at the same time that you are depressing the transverse button, you will detent the tube to the center of the table. Now this is very important <clears throat> so that when you're making exposures, you are utilizing the appropriate size image receptor or cassette for your body part. Once you have detented the tube to the table, now you're ready to go ahead and insert a cassette. And we have two different types and two different sizes of cassettes that we're going to put into our, this is called a Bucky tray. We have a 10 by 12 inch cassette or image receptor. We also have a 14 by 17 inch cassette or image receptor. <clears throat> As I said, this is called a Bucky tray. This is your Bucky handle. You can move the Bucky tray up and down the table by depressing this button on the arm. You depress this button, we can move it up and down the table. This will help us better align our cassette to the body part. If we're taking an x-ray of a patient's leg, we want the cassette to be further down on the table. If we're taking an x-ray of the patient's shoulder, we'd want the bucky tray to be closer up here to the patient's shoulder so that it can house the cassette. The table also <clears throat> is able to move up and down. So we're going to bring it to its highest position. It also gives us a real good height of what we're going to be working at. <clears throat> now when we pull the bucky tray out, be very careful not to pull it all the way out, there is this lever here. If you lift the handle, it slides back and forth. This, this helps to accommodate the different size cassettes that we're going to place into the bucky tray. The first cassette that we're going to place into the bucky tray is the 14 by 17 inch cassette. We're going to place it in lengthwise or longitudinally. It'll just slide right in. You'll take the handle that will lock it in to place. Okay? 
<clears throat> now what we want to do is that we have the tube that is detented to the bucky. We want to align the tube to the bucky. So if we move the tube longitudinally, we depress this and we slide it down some, there is a button here that is called lamp. If you depress that button, you will see that a light comes on. This light is an indication of the light size or the light field that should correlate with the image receptor or the cassette that you have placed in the Bucky tray. It's also important to notice that these numbers that are listed on your <clears throat> tube housing, this says SID. SID is source to image distance. We expose all of our radiographic images either at a 40 inch SID or a 72 inch SID. And we do have some tools that will help us to determine what the 40 inch SID is to the table. As long as the table is all the way up in the up position, there are two gauges located at the top part of the tube arm housing. On the right hand side, it says Bucky. On the left hand side, it says table. <clears throat> so we want to go to a 40 inch SID to the Bucky, this being the Bucky tray. So we will bring our tube up to about a 40 inch SID to the Bucky. And you can see it's 37.7 inches to the table top. <clears throat> if you also need to make a, a guesstimate or to really pinpoint exactly what your <clears throat> distance is, there happens to be a tape measure located on the side. You can always check and verify what your distance is. Once we're at a 40 inch SID, we are also detented to our table. So our tube is detented to the table bucky. Then we are going to align our tube to our film or our image receptor by depressing the button. And you can see where the light field comes all the way out and you want to center to the appropriate size image receptor. As you can see, this is a significantly smaller light field than what we have here in our Bucky tray. This is a 14 by 17 inch placed in lengthwise. So we're going to move the collimator knobs to open the light field to a 14 by 17 inch distance. So we're going to turn this to 14 by 17. And you can see that now our light field is 14 inches <clears throat> wide by 17 inches long, which is the same size of image receptor or cassette that we have placed in our Bucky tray. This gives us maximum usage of the light field in, re in relationship to the cassette or the Bucky tray. All right. Now we can also put in a smaller cassette into the Bucky tray, which we will do now. All of the cassettes can be placed in either lengthwise or transversely. So we'll take a smaller cassette now. This is our 10 by 12 inch cassette and we're going to place that in transversely. You always want to place it in as far into the bucky tray as you can. Then you will push the lever forward to lock it into place. Once you have secured the cassette into the bucky tray, then you can adjust, to adjust the collimator knobs to the appropriate size of cassette. So again, we have this large 14 by 17 inch light field when we only have a 10 by 12 inch cassette placed in our bucky tray. So we will turn our collimator lights to the appropriate size. so that we are appropriately <clears throat> positioned in a transverse setting or crosswise. We have 12 inches going crosswise and 10 inches going top to bottom. Now once we have our tube detented to the center of the table and we also are tube film aligned, we're ready to go ahead and position our patient so that their body part 
is in the center of the light field. <clears throat> Once you've done that, it's much easier to move the table, which is able, it's a free floating table. It's able to move all around to position our body part exactly where that light field is. It help us to get the anatomy in the center of the light field. Okay? So we have the appropriate SID with the appropriate light field selection to our cassette or image receptor. We've discussed the Bucky tray, how the Bucky tray can move up and down the table. We've also talked about detenting the tube so that the tube is detented to the center of the table. Now in radiography, we take two images of all parts of the anatomy. One that is located <clears throat> generally in the AP position or from top to bottom, and another one that is located across the patient or a lateral position. If the patient is unable to turn onto their side, we can manipulate our tube that can help us to get that lateral position and projection of the body part. So I'm going to bring the tube down into a little working <clears throat> area so that we can see it a little bit better. I have just lowered it <clears throat> and I'm just going to try and show you that at the end of the arm of the tube there is a pin that's secured into this circular area. If you pull the pin, you depress this out, it will enable the tube to move back and forth around. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually turn the tube so that it is going to be positioned on that side of the table. I'm going to walk over there <clears throat> and show you that we can then <clears throat> move the tube and lower the tube down. If we hit the roll button, we are able now to make an exposure going across the patient's body. This way we have a position from top to bottom, and we can also make an exposure from side to side. This is very beneficial for trauma x-rays, cross-table C-spines, cross-table lumbar spines, even if we're doing some extremity work and the patient is unable to move accordingly. <clears throat> we would put the cassette on the opposite side of the table, and we would just align the tube to the cassette with the appropriate light field for the cassette size that you have. All right, so this is a way that we can help <clears throat> obtain the appropriate images that we need, even when our patient is a little limited on what they can do. By moving the tube back, you just depress the pin, bring it back around, <clears throat> and you're able to continue your work on the appropriate side of the table. Again, we have discussed how to move the table. We have discussed the bucky. We've discussed how to insert the cassette into the bucky tray, both lengthwise and crosswise. We have discussed the components of the tube. These are the high voltage cables, okay, that help power your tube. We can also manipulate the tube housing that will help us to put the body part in the center of the light field. This is very beneficial when radiographing extremity work and that types of things. <clears throat> the all locks button also will enable you to move the tube in all different fashions without depressing multiple buttons at the same time. So again we've talked about how to detent the tube to the table with the transverse auto stop. That's one of the first things that you want to do, detent your tube. Then we've talked about <clears throat> tube film alignment so that your light field is in the center of the image receptor or the cassette. We have also talked about the appropriate SID and the collimators with the light field being open to the appropriate size cassette that you have placed in. We have talked about how to move the table all around from top to bottom and as you can notice there is a 72 inch SID listed here. We are unable to get 72 inches to the table, but we will be able to get 72 inches to what is the upright wall bucky. Just as with the table bucky, we have a vertical standing 
upright wall unit that will house a cassette there. We will then show you how to tube film a line to the upright wall bucky. We're going to conclude with our discussion of the x-ray equipment by talking about the upright wall bucky. We talked about the table bucky earlier, and this is just an upright vertical version of that. Again, this is your bucky tray, same holding device that we had in our table bucky. We can actually get a 72 inch SID by utilizing the upright wall bucky. We have turned our tube so that it is in a horizontal position. It is now going this way. You can see that I have the light field already opened up to the 14 by 17 inch image receptor that is placed in the bucky tray. Again, just as with the table bucky, we can place any size cassette that we want in the upright wall bucky. We just have to adjust our collimator box appropriately. So I'm going to take out the larger cassette. There is one thing that is different, and that is, is that since the bucky is vertical, if we try to put the cassette in like this, it will fall to the bottom. So we have a device that will secure the cassette at the appropriate size that we are utilizing. And as you can see, we have placed a 10 by 12 inch cassette in lengthwise to our upright wall bucky. You still need to maintain <clears throat> detent. Detent can be seen a little bit easier at the upright wall bucky. If you can notice, there is a center square and if you could see, depending upon how the lighting is, there is an X that is in the middle of this square. That means that the tube is detented to the bucky. I'm going to move it out of detent so that you can see. Here is our X dividing the cassette. If we were not in detent, we would not be able to expose the entire cassette. So we need to make sure that our tube is in detent so that we have the entire cassette with the light field in there. Now we have changed our cassette to the 10 by 12 inch, which means we also need to collimate to the appropriate size. And as you can see, we have now made a smaller light field to represent the same size of cassette that we have placed in the upright wall bucky. You can move the upright wall bucky according to your patient's height by depressing the handle here on the side and it will go up and down. And again, you want to be tube film aligned, which means that this is not tube film aligned. Here is our image receptor. Here is our tube. In order for it to be aligned, it needs to be at the same space. The same applications apply for the upright wall bucky as apply for the table bucky.